Hi, everybody. Today we are joined by Mr. Kai Wong, who uh, I hope you know who he is because he's my favorite YouTuber when it comes to cameras. And Kai, you're based in England right now. And since I haven't been in London, you very kindly um, offered your time to join us for a little interview. So thanks so much for joining us. No problem at all. Um, just waiting for the check. <laughs> so, oh, there's some, there's some nice things over there. You can, oh, you can oh, yeah, pay me yeah. in, in other good goodies. Okay, but, okay. Yeah, no, all good, all good, no problem. It's been, it's been many years since we last saw each other. It has been, yeah, man. God, how long? You it said it was, might have been 10 years. Yeah, I think it might be 10 or nine years. I remember coming into the armory. Yeah. And then uh, it was Alan. He said, uh, I've got this ring jacket, ring jacket for you. And I said, is it waterproof? <laughs> he said, no, it's ring, ring jacket. <laughs> that was a great time. You, you, you kitted out a very badly dressed man in some very nice clobber. No, you, look, you, looked, you look great before and you look even greater now. Uh. And fast forward 10 years, <laughs> even more so. I thank you very much. I'm thank paid you. to say that. So I'm waiting for my check from you as well. <laughs> well, well, this is, I, I purposely came in your, your clothing. I mean, not literally your, your clothes. That, yeah, that would that'd be, be strange. Yeah. This is the armory's uh, Ascot Chang. Yeah. Our so I would, I'd be free from criticism about my style. Nice, man. You know, I'd love to make a camera version of this for you one day. Yeah. That'd be fun. I'd love, I love lots of pockets for, for when out taking photos. I don't really like carrying bags. Yeah. Well, the building bags are great. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not an ad. And just my pockets, because you can just store like filters and stuff, lens caps. Yeah. Or batteries, and you just, you know, yeah. chuck it in. Well, we made like gusseted pockets here, so it gives you a little more capacity. Yeah. Or we can make you like a double, double gusseted pocket. But the trouble with pockets, I don't know, for, for stylish people, do, they, do you actually use them? I mean, I don't see people like with fat pockets stuff with like bananas and oranges and stuff like that you know stylish people yeah. that pity you don't see like a banana hanging out of their pocket well they're potassium deficient they might not have a banana but they're potassium deficient <laughs> i had an old french teacher actually who used to wear cargo pants and he put a french dictionary in there we were in class he just takes his french dictionary out of his cargo pant pocket did the like, french not have many words <laughs> <laughs> that must be small dictionary <laughs> We well, remember like the blue covered Collins pocket oh, dictionary we all yeah, used to use yeah, in yeah. school, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was it. Oh, Cargo pants are great. That was so great. I, in an ideal world, I'll just have pockets everywhere. Yeah. Like pockets, pockets, yeah. pockets, pockets, shoes, shoes with pockets. Yeah. yeah, that'd be nice too. Yeah, shoes with pockets. What would you keep with, with shoes uh, with pockets? What would you keep in there? Um, I don't know, maybe some socks, uh, you know, just keep an extra pair of I've socks. I've watched train yeah. spotting, they, they keep their, their, their recreational drugs in there, don't they? Yeah. I wouldn't do that. No. Drugs are bad. Not. Drugs are really bad. Yeah. Yes. Um, Definitely, I would never recreate with drugs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway. <laughs> Moving swiftly onwards. Yeah. Kai, how did you get into this whole thing of cameras? Well, I started getting to photography when I was in university because I thought um, I could do with Thursday mornings off. I could have Lion because the photography teacher, he was lazy. <laughs> he, would, he would take the first lesson of the semester uh, every term. He would say, go ahead and take photos. And for the rest of the term, there's no lessons at all. So I was like, yes, I'm going to take this. This is fantastic. I can, I can go to sleep or, or do some other work. Mm -hmm. um, and then my sister bought me a camera. A Pentax SLR, and I thought, oh, God. Wait, start. so you went to photography class without a camera yet? Yeah, I was, I was using disposable cameras because I thought, I can do this. Interesting, okay. And then, you know, all the others were taking photos of tramps and stuff like that. Oh, what, what's your project? It's uh, homeless people. And then what did I do? I did photos of parties, which is just me get, going out on the night out. I thought, this is, this is how people look when they're drunk. <laughs> So that didn't do very well. But, and, and then my sister bought me a, a nice camera and I thought, oh God, I have to do something good with, with this now. Yeah. And I started really getting into it and learning about how to use the dials and settings and things like that. Yeah. And I started doing landscape photos and it, I really got passionate about it. Oh, nice. So landscape was your starting point, huh? Yeah. That's super interesting. Because, you know, lots of landscapes here. Um, and then when I moved to Hong Kong, that's when I started getting into street because, you know, well, they're, they're landscapes, but there's, there's more street. Yeah. Hong Kong streets are really interesting. Very yeah. varied, you know, always a lot of action. And the life on the Hong Kong streets is just amazing because some of it is like, what, what, 
what's going on here? <laughs> it's hard to explain what's going on, so I have to take a photo of it. And the light is beautiful in Hong Kong sometimes too. Yeah. You know? I mean, I always think of like Mac Fung, Fan Ho, like, man, those images were incredible. Fan Ho, yeah. I mean, some of the shadows and the lights coming off the buildings, um, I never got them because I'm not good enough. Um, well, you didn't wait long enough. <laughs> if you had more pockets and you had a banana <laughs> exactly. and a Vita Soy in that, the other pocket, you'd be set. That's taken me um, 20 years to find that out. So only now, but I'm here now, so I, I'm, I'm not in Hong Kong anymore. Cool. Life's yeah. a learning experience. I'm going to go back with my banana. What made you move over here? What made you want to come back? Because you were in Hong Kong for quite a while too, right? Yeah, I, I guess it, it jaded me a bit. I thought, you know, I just want a bit of quiet mm. and start a, a football, f I want to start a football club. So I started having babies. Okay. Gave up at two because 11, 11 kids is too much. Yeah. So I had two kids. Those thought, are expensive. They, they are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially if it's like a Premier League football club. <laughs> But yeah, but eventually they pay for themselves with the merchandise. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get your kids ready for the merchandise. You know? <laughs> yeah. Kai W, Kai w merch. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted a, a, a change in, in in life. Yeah, yeah. So, but you know, who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? Probably not gonna move back to Hong Kong. But um, you had a reputation as a YouTuber before you even came back to the UK too. Yeah, I mean. I first start, started off at a company called Red Wolf, shooting airsoft guns. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then I moved to Digital Web because they advertised a job for a writer. And I went to the interview and said, yeah, writing's cool, but I want to do this. And they said, all right. And then um, they employed me. Nice. And they didn't really know what to do. They, they had this little studio. They put me in. Like, I was like quarantined. I was separate from all the, the office workers. Yeah. And I was just sat there by myself <laughs> and I just said, do, do your thing. And um, the rest is history. Nice. Yeah. And how I've do you just, feel about I it? Just like, how, do you, how do you think you evolved since then? Well, I guess, guess I'm a bit more mature in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again mm. when you're 20, you know, 10 years later and you're still doing the same thing. That's, that gets a bit boring. Mm. But, um, but you, you know, got some other things. You got some other things planned too, right? The way you operate, the sort of content you're producing. You have some plans too, right? Yeah. I mean, now Locke is here. We can conquer the world. Locke being your dynamic duo partner. Yes. Mm. Not uh, not in a relationship. Just he and films me. Not a security lock either. Because <laughs> before you couldn't go out the house because you had no lock. Yeah. So everything was shot at home. Yes. Yeah. Now yeah. you can go outside. Now I've got locks. It's nice to go outside. I've found security. <laughs> <laughs> I've just realized there's ring doorbells as well with the little cameras on it. Fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, no, Locke. Locke is a, a tall, skinny guy mm. who uh, occasionally sings with me and films me. Mm. So uh, he's here. Um, now we can start making videos again, just like we did at Dish Rove. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I didn't realize he came so recently, actually. Yeah, it was like last year. He's been a he for one year. Okay. Yeah. I told him I said hi. I haven't seen him in years too. Yeah. He's a nice guy though. I really like him. Yeah. Um, he could do with a different color shirt. He's always got white shirts. I can make him a blue shirt. I have those. <laughs> I have the power. <laughs> <laughs> um, camera wise. Yeah. How do you feel like last 10 years? You know, a lot of stuff has changed. How do you feel about the whole thing? How do I feel about the whole thing? Yeah. Well, it's going... I mean, it's less geeky. When I started making videos about uh, cameras and photography, it was still very, very geeky. Um, I mean, now, now everybody takes photos for Instagram. Yeah. And it's cool to take photos, of travel photos. Yeah. Um, so it's changed in that respect. And all the manufacturers know that they're, they're making cameras for vlog, vloggers and, yeah. and with crazy filters. Yeah. I, I kind of, I never thought it would become such a big thing that like camera manufacturers would treat that as like a whole yeah. new demographic, you know? Because I always sort of assumed, well, most people just either stick to their phone and there's this gap and then there's yeah. like semi-professionals to professionals who are going to invest in a, a big bundle of kit. Yeah. There's a lot of like nice, quick and simple vlogging stuff these days too, which is interesting. 
Well, there's a lot of um, as there's a lot of aspirational stuff, isn't it? They, people want to want, once they get into photography or start seeing uh, their favourite influences use this fancy camera and that fancy camera. Mm. They want to do the same. They want to replicate that. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so, I mean, with I mean, when I, back when I first started, as I said, it was very geeky. It was, it's still a bit nerdy. Mm. But it suddenly becomes this this cool thing hmm. to have a nice camera. So the nature of the use changed, really. Yeah, interesting. And, and what do you think of the technology? Like, how do you think the technology has changed? It's getting a bit bo it's getting a bit boring, isn't it? Yeah, you think so? I mean, I, th I think it's reached a, not quite a plateau, but it's getting there. Yeah. I mean, what new features have you seen in the last couple of years? Which you think, yeah, that's cool. It wasn't like when the first Sony mirrorless came out. It's like, whoa. Yeah. The Alpha 7, what, that was what, wild. That was what great. more can they do with this? Yeah. And then they would do something the next year or the year after. Yeah. And then what, what else can you do with technology? So it's, mm. it's you, can, you can have a camera from five years ago and it will still do really great stuff. Yeah. Which is, which is good because that means you don't have to spend so much money to, to kind of get into the hobby. I feel like... Um, <clears throat> You're right, like the technology has plateaued to a certain extent. And because everything is basically good enough, ergonomics is really what's going to set one brand apart from the other, you know. And there's still a lot of great old cameras that just feel just right in the hand, you know. Whereas, like, I think a lot of modern cameras sometimes miss the point. Yeah. You know. Do you have a favorite in terms of, like, Do, uh, what you're using? I, I, I recently bought a 5D Mark II because that's like a classic and I that is a classic I had some great times shooting with that okay. it still works it still takes quite high resolution images and yeah. it, it does the job why the mark 2 and not the 1 or the 3 or the 4 right? with mark 2 well mark 1 is a bit too old mm -hmm. mark 2 mark 3 the the screens aren't so changeable so if you want to adapt lenses to the 5D mark 2 you can use nikon lenses or you know old legacy lenses you can swap the focusing screen out for a Oh, one of the split really? prism. Oh, I didn't know that. So it's quite quite nice and easy for, for focusing manually. Oh, that's amazing. Whereas the 5 to Mark III was a bit more difficult in that respect. Oh, I never knew that. That's so cool. Yeah. I remember you did a review a little while ago for that Castleblad. Yeah. The little cube one. Yes. Yeah. What was, which one was that one? That's the 907X. <clears throat> what did you think of that thing? I like it because it, it, I always like Hasselblads. It's, it's the kind of waist level kind of shooting. Yeah. And it kind of mimics that because it's got the it's got a tilty flippy screen. I mean that's that's not how it is before. It's a you know you look through the mirror, but still it's it's just a nice feeling. Like you can tilt it enough that you can use yeah. it at waist level, right? And then you can you can mount it to the old Hasselblads. Oh really? Yeah. So so you can buy it as just a back also. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, so that's one thing I'd love to have, but I mean when is that price? Probably not. This was six grand. I think something right? like that. Yeah. What would you rather have, a Leica or that? Like an M11 or that? Can I, can I have a second-hand Hasselblad and a second-hand Leica? <laughs> I mean, a second-hand Leica is not much cheaper than a first-hand Leica these no, days, too. But, I mean, I've, I, I think some of the old digital Leicas are still good. Mm. I, I don't see... You don't really need to have the latest Leica because it does the same thing. Yeah. The old one has just got a different sensor, yeah. high resolution, yeah. and then they'll, they'll come up with something like, it's more slim. Yeah. But, but for me, that made the difference. Going back to ergonomics, true. from the M10 onwards, I was like, oh, this feels a little yeah. bit more right to me yeah. than the previous one. But um, I mean, if you look at, I've got the M5 there. M5. That's a bit of an anomaly in terms of like a design. That's very sort of... Uh, um, it's very squared off, right? Yeah. I think the the Besses, the Besses used to be like this a bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. The Voigtlander Besses. But I like that. I think it's super cool. When was this from? 80s? 70s? 70s, I think. Man, it's a beautiful piece of design. Really beautiful. But people hated that because because Leica shooters, Leica fans, they just want the M3, basically. Mm. They don't want to evolve. They don't want to be like, okay, this is a, a, a new... Amazing design. No, we, we, what, what should we do for the M, M12? Uh, same thing as before. <laughs> it looks exactly the same. And then they'll probably have less buttons. 
Um, but you know, focusing, shooting, same. You don't need a burst. You don't. It doesn't have autofocus. Yeah. So you can use a M, I mean, M10 is quite reasonable for some people. Mm. Some people it's still expensive. Then you've got M9 and then the M Type 240, which are really reasonably priced. Yeah, it's true. Might be a good time to get in on the monochrome ones, like the early monochrome ones. Yeah. Those are cool. I actually had one. I sold it and I kind of regret it. That was really great. Yeah. That was fun as hell. Yeah. But it's just that sometimes you want to take a color photo and, and, you, and then what? You've got your monochrome <laughs> out of you. Uh, I'm taking some vacation photos. Oh, let's take a, oh, look at that beautiful blue sea. Oh, it's black and white. <laughs> Sorry, your imagination. Or AI now, because AI is so advanced now. It'll just fill well, the colors in yeah, for you. Yeah, exactly. You can, you, you know, sometimes they, uh, they have these old black and white films and they, they color it. Yeah. You can do it with those. Uh, you know, you can color your black and white photos. Oh, you could hire a guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People do everything. You see, hire a guy to just color in your photo for you. <laughs> Shoot it in black and white and hire someone to color you the just, photo for you. I'll, I'll search on Fiverr to see if there's anybody. <laughs> color, monochrome photo colorer. But, you know, like earlier we were having a chat about computational photography and like the mm. amount of technology that's going into photography now. And what do you think? It's a different art to it, isn't it? If you can call it an art. I mean, some people say it's an art, but mm. it's just fine. People, people like it. It's, it's not my thing. Mm. I, I'm, I'm very old school in that. I just want everything straight out of camera. Yeah. And that's exactly how it is rather than, okay, let's put some goats yeah. in here and you know start <laughs> letting it's it's computerized yeah so, what do you think of like the hdr effect in phones specifically you know i used to laugh about hdr because mainly because how people did hdr photography back in the old days it always said it was like a vomit of colors it was like <laughs> oh, this is so colorful and saturated and contrasty but it looks great because the tech in phones I mean, if you just use a sensor and, and if you don't have all this fancy, clever uh, software, it would look pretty bad. Yeah. So I think it's really clever and I think that's good. I think mm. that's, that, that, that's a brilliant thing because you can get amazing photos from your phone just because of HDR. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, it makes things, you know, for the average user, like as a point and click thing, it's super convenient. It, it's funny when you say, when I think of HDR, I think of like the even earlier use of that term where yeah. you had to use it basically just for landscapes yeah. and you would bracket the frame yeah. and then layer it all together, like composite it all together, you know? That's when it that looked so terrible. But sometimes people didn't go crazy with the colors. Sometimes they yeah. were subtle about it and they just used to fill in a little bit here, a dark little bit here, you know, it's good. I guess at that time, nobody realized that was HDR. It was, it was sort it's of so like a, a flex. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna do the work to do HDR. So I'm gonna make it super, awful looking so you know it's hdr <laughs> it's, it's 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 very shouty it is very shouty yeah. it's very shouty sort of work yeah i get it <laughs> but hdr has gone clever it's it's you know hdr is another thing now HD, you know you want to have hdr televisions hdr phones it's a bit of a hype word yeah so it's good it makes it makes things look nicer Nice. It is nice when things look nice. It is. Yes. Um, cameras that you like. Because, you know, like for me, it's always interesting to hear about people's taste. Mm. And you've been around this for long enough and you have a very specific sort of taste for cameras. What do you like? Um, you, not that many, really. It's, I said to somebody that it's like somebody who watches too much porn. They, they kind of get desensitized to it and, <laughs> and nothing is, is sexy anymore. You see all these, this gear and, you, and nothing becomes sexy anymore. It's just like, you know, you've seen it all. So there, there's some things which, which probably doesn't make sense or it won't seem like that fancy. You know, you get lots of nice cameras these days mm -hmm. with super fast frame rates and, and 8K, but just something simple. I like a lot of compact cameras, compact film cameras. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any in, in there anymore, but in something like that, it's just the, the Canon F1 is, is, is gorgeous. It really is, yeah. I'm amazed they don't pull that one out of the archive and make a digital version of that. That'd be awesome. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know why. I mean, the same as Nikon. Nikon could probably make loads of money selling something like the Nikon F. Yeah, for sure. 
Wait, so, no, they, they did make one like that. Something like that. They, but it was huge. It yes. wasn't like that small, compact the, thing. It was the huge. The DF. And I, and I said it was like, I think the DF stands for the... <laughs> what the... <laughs> but you know, I, I think when it comes to buying a nice camera for myself, it's just whatever makes uh, me, me pleased. It's mm. a lot down to design. I, I like stuff that looks good. Mm. Because a lot of cameras, we're, we're, we're led to believe that a fancy new camera will make your photography life better. It won't. Mm. It'll, it'll just make you think, yeah, okay, I've got the perfect tool. Mm. Just go out and enjoy photos. Mm. I, I, you know, I could do with just one lens and one camera body. Mm. Um, I've got Leica Noctilux, which I absolutely love. It, it's not the perfect lens. It's not the sharpest. It just, just looks weird in an awesome way. Mm. Uh, then I've got like like M5, got a Type 240. Um, then the Ricoh GRs are fantastic. Yeah, man. I've got my GR with me. I yeah. love that thing. I mean, that's another thing which is just, it, it looks like Japanese consumer electronics. Yeah. There's nothing particularly exciting about it. But in use, it's just fantastic. They were smart to bring this back. Yeah. And actually bring it back properly. And know? It's just missing a viewfinder, because I've got the, I've got the film one. I've got the oh, film you've got one. the film one? Yeah. Okay, so oh, wow. You've got the little tiny viewfinder. Yeah, it'd be nice to bring the viewfinder back. I think they could even bring it back just as like a, a dumb viewfinder. It doesn't need to be an EVF, right? No. It could just be like this. I love the proportion. I absolutely yeah. love the portion. Like it just looks and feels great. This is great having the exposure compensation knob up there. Rico's absolutely nailing this niche. That there's nobody who really has the same thing. Some other companies have tried. Nikon had something with an APS-C size sensor, similar size. I think it was Nikon A. Yeah. Then Fujifilm had something kind of similar. But Rico's just stayed I, I guess because they've got this is quite famous because of Dida Moriyama mm. he doesn't use Rico anymore he uses some compact I think mm. but uh, it's just funny you, you, you don't have to think too much about it. you don't have to think oh, yeah no you know some some like people don't yeah. oh no it's a scratch door <laughs> no, they, they keep the tape on the bottom plate to not scratch it <laughs> <laughs> it's a camera, just use it. You just put it in your pocket. Yeah, it sounds a little bit like watches in that respect, right? You know how some yeah. people are like, I bought a new Rolex, I gotta keep all the stickers yeah. on it, right? And the, But the stickers like slowly peeling off. And yeah. you're just like, ooh, it looks, looks like your watch is shedding, mate. And, it, and it, those stickers, it gets to the point where it's just your, your body heat is heated up so much, <laughs> it ends up like uh, sticking in, in, a, in a way that is almost semi-permanent. Yeah, um, or weirdly pornographic, one of the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back to cameras. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, it's very practical. It's a, it's a tool. It's, it just lets you do things because it's so compact and yeah. you don't have to have it strapped around you. You don't have to yeah. lug it around you. It's a perfect travel camera, street camera, anything. So would you say you generally prefer more compact cameras? Yeah, I think... Although I sometimes prefer, uh, although I sometimes still like carrying an SLR, mm -hmm. just just for the, the fun and also just the clack. Mm. Like you know, mirrorless cameras, there's it makes a little beep and then it's very it's very very polite. <laughs> sometimes it's nice to have, com, com, you know, almost silent or loud, loud and proud, mm. like a little firecracker. Yeah. Mm. So that's interesting. Yeah. How often do you pull out your phone? to take a photograph? All the time. Probably more often than one of these or a mirrorless camera. And every time you do that, are you like, ah, oh, crap, I should have pulled out my Rico. Or are you like, oh, that's uh, fine. I got the image, that's fine. Yeah, sometimes I look back. Sometimes I look at my phone and think, oh, you know, taking photos of kids. Well, one day, will it look crap? Will it look, you know, uh, when people are, uh, have got 16K or 32K video, and then they'll look back and think, what is this grainy image <laughs> of me, Dad? <laughs> you know, I, I think you can make out. It's, it's, uh, I think sometimes people put too much importance on having the highest resolution. 
Yeah. That's a weird, weird one to chase, I think, because nobody really needs the extra resolution anymore. No. I'd rather have the dynamic range. You yes. Know, I'd rather have the better color. I'd rather have the depth of field if I can get it. Like, I think yeah. those things are even more important. Or something that will... I think this is the, these are the kind of cameras that will help you get... It's almost like a smartphone because, as I said, it's you put it in your pocket. Yeah. When you've got something in your bag, yeah. it's so big that you don't want it around your neck. Yeah. So you put it in the bag. That's a bit clunky. It is. Where do you think cameras going to go from here? It's going to be all about video. Yeah? Yeah. Do you think there'll be like, just like we have the vinyl revival, do you think there'll be a still camera revival? I know we have, we've been in the midst of a film revival. Yeah. Right? I think, I think stills will all, always be there because there's a certain art to it mm. instead of, okay, uh, we're going we're to record a video and then we'll just take a frame out of that. Yeah. Of course, if you take a really nice frame out of that, and you don't tell anybody. No, may, probably nobody will be able to tell the mm -hmm. difference. But still, there's a certain art to just taking the right moment. Yeah. Decisive moment, as they say. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Well said. All right, man. Anything else you want to talk about? Any, any exciting any, things you want to plug? I, I would, your favorite things in the world? I would love to give some good style advice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Don't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> on that note <laughs> oh I tell you what because we always yeah. finish our interviews with this any interesting advice life advice life philosophy routines habits that you're like oh I'm glad I do this or I'm glad I think this way I find it very helpful um, follow your passion yeah. that's what I did and it's turned out alright it has turned out alright yeah cool man well, it's so good to see you. Thank you. After bleh. that was a, that was a little a little thumb action going yeah. on. Take two. <laughs> there we go. We did. It's like those claw claw arcade games where you're trying to get the toy. It never works out. I guess so. Yeah. 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 All right. And on that note, on the on the note of the arcade game never working out. That's it. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for having me. Oh wait, last thing. Follow Kai on YouTube and Instagram. Kai W, right, is the channel? Yes. Kai W. Okay, that's it. For real. Thanks for watching.